Yo, what up YouTube? It's your boy Joe Barber back again with another video. Well, it is Monday. Uh, I don't know the date. <laughs> what is today? Uh, the 20 something. It's the end of the month. It's like the 20, I don't know, man, the 24th, 25th. Something like that. Um, but I wanted to talk today about habits, about good habits and bad habits and identifying them. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we value in life. Uh, some things that we value are because we've been conditioned to value, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's having money, cars, shoes, whatever it is that we value, right? We value it and we, we're, you know, passionate about it or it makes us happy, you know. Uh, but there's also things that we do and habits that we have where we let them control us, right? And you got to work on those things, you know, whether it's lying, whether it's, you know, being negative about things or having a perception about things uh, or holding grudges against people. Um, not letting go of things, you know, not being, you know, like forgiving people. Um, I want to say the, the main thing that comes to mind is that um, we are all broken in some way. All of us. We are all broken in some way. And we all have secrets and we all have bad habits. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of things we inherited from our family, we inherited from our culture, uh, and we had inherited from like the era that we were born in, you know, the way of thinking and the way we process stuff. A lot of that stuff, we we, uh, we inherited it, man. It's not like we asked for it. But a lot of times when you go against the grain and you don't wanna fit in with what your family, your culture, your whatever, then you're being difficult or you're being a rebel or you're being, you know, whatever. Uh, and it makes it hard because you don't feel like you belong anymore. And when that happens, you become really lonely. You know what I'm saying? And nobody wants to be lonely, man. Uh, as humans, a lot of us don't function very well by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that myself. But there's times when you have to be alone because you have to know yourself. You have to get to know yourself. You have to understand like who you are uh, because the color of your skin doesn't identify you. Your name doesn't identify Your last name doesn't identify you, who you are. Uh, you can appreciate it and respect it, but the fact is that you, your, yourself, your spirit, your soul, who you are, and why you're here on this earth, it's bigger than your complexion. It's bigger than your culture. It's bigger than the era that we were born in and what we believe nowadays, you know. Um, and you have to sit down and do that on your own. <laughs> you know, I want to point you in the right direction, right? But it's an awakening, man, and, and it's, it's, it's a lot. And I could tell you, my experience, uh, I used to go to church a long time ago and my pastor, Freddie Garcia, uh, I used to go to this church here in San Antonio that was called Outcry in the Barrio. And there's a book that a lot of prisons uh, would pass out to inmates and stuff like that. And, you know, not just them, it was for other people, anyone that was broken. You read that book, man, it'll change your perception about life. But I had the privilege of having him as my pastor. And I can tell I didn't know what it was, but there was something special about this dude, and I can I can sense the aura that he had. He had so much faith in God, so much faith. But if I would have known his whole story of how he was a drug addict and how he was a thief and how he was sleeping in the streets and all that, and if I would have known that, I would have been like, uh, by you know, by public standard, you'd be like, oh no, nah, he's toxic, he's no good, get away from him, cut him off. You know, and because 
he surrendered his life to God and God changed his life so dramatically, people were automatically drawn to him. And it might not be the biggest people that you think of, but this dude got to meet the president of the United States. He made it that far, you know, and he was just some, you know, some vato from the West side, just like me. Uh, he made bad decisions growing up, you know, we all do. And some of us pay a bigger price than others. But I bring him into this because when I saw that he could change lives by sharing his story and by being faithful to God, no matter what, that empowered me. So, um, you know, I, I don't go to that church anymore. Things changed there. His son took over when he, when he passed away. It was a sad day when he passed away, but I know he's with, I know he's with God for sure. I know he is. But the fact is that he was able to make a difference and he grew up in the same area I grew up, you know, and maybe in a worse conditioned area when drugs were prevalent and gangs and, and there wasn't enough police, there wasn't cameras everywhere and all that kind of stuff, man. People were getting away with a lot of bad stuff and people didn't have much, you know, there's more money now in circulation than there was way back then. So imagine how poor people really were then uh, compared to now. Um, so anyway, what I want to bring into this is that uh, you have to understand that we all have bad habits and the good thing is that you can replace those bad habits with good habits. But you have to find out who you are first. You really have to dive in and be like, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? What do I want to accomplish? What makes me happy? What makes me sad? What makes me mad? Then when you identify all that, you want to deal with how to control your emotions, how to detach from situations that you have no control over. I don't have control over people. I don't make people mad and people don't have control over me. They don't, I can't allow people to make me mad or make me sad. I choose that. I can choose to be happy when someone's yelling at me and cussing at me. I can trick my brain to, to not give those words power. You know, and that's the thing that I've been working on because my bad habit was that I had, you know, like a, a short fuse, you know, and I always wanted to defend myself because of the way I grew up real poor. And, you know, people used to make fun of me because I had, you know, ugly clothes and shoes were torn up. I used to buy shoes from the Goodwill when I was a kid. My mom used to take me there. Man, I would wash those shoes like, like I bought them brand new. I used to try to take care of them and... I didn't know how to fix shoes, man. All I did was get the white paint, the white shoe polish and try to make my shoes look new again. And I would just paint them with the shoe polish. Uh, I, grew, I grew up poor, man. And, and But the thing was, when people made fun of me because I did that, then I wanted to beat them up because it hurt me. It hurt my feelings. And I didn't know the difference of, you know, uh, like detaching myself from that, like, it sucks when people make fun of people, it, you know, it's not cool. I know we, you know, some people we cut at the barbershop, but when it comes to kids, man, that's it's not cool. Um, but anyway, what I wanna say is that uh, I grew up like that, so I developed bad habits. Uh, I always was in survival mode, even in uh, throughout my life, man, and, and my career and my relationships. Um, and I ruined good relationships with people because I couldn't control my emotions all the time. I didn't know how to. I never even tried to. I never looked into it. I never tried to study about it. I never tried to read about it. I just, well, that's who I am. If you don't like it, take it or leave it mentality. But it's not that way, man. All of us have a choice daily. You have a choice. I have a choice to be happy or to be sad. Man, one of the worst things ever that, that has ever happened in my life happened yesterday. Um, but I, I can't dwell, right? I can't sit there and feel sorry for myself, you know, and I've gotten to that point because whether that happened or it didn't happen, I still got to keep pushing, you know, and I'll tell you what, man, one thing that I've learned in my life, I don't want to hit this thing at my barbershop. Um, one thing that I've learned in my life is that bad day bad days are gonna come bad days are gonna come brother or sisters <laughs> uh 
bad days are coming, dude. And you got to learn how to deal with them and how to turn them and learn the lessons. You know what I'm saying? So you prepare. It's like when a thunderstorm comes in, man. A lot of us, you know, that own businesses and houses, you have insurance and all that, but you'll learn. You know, just like when people, when hurricane comes in, you know, I'm, I've never been in that, but I see like in Florida and Louisiana, when hurricanes come in, what do they do? They prepare. Why? Because they've been through that before. They've been through that storm. And do, do they get scared? Maybe. But they're like, I done been through some stuff already, man. We, we can handle this. And that's what happens in life when you deal with your situations, you deal with your habits, you deal with yourself and you go through these experiences. And, and I learned that I would never want to go head on with any of my trauma, with any of my bad experiences, with money, relationships, friendships, uh, with life in general. I never appreciated the beauty in the struggle. You know what I mean? Now I do because I've learned like, wow, man, there's the sun's going to like right now. There is no sun, but the sun is still there. I could show you like how cloudy it is out here, right? The sun is still there. It's it's we can't see it, but the sun is still there. So I know that I know that. And I know that on the other side, there's sunshine. So I got to take this day and say, you know what? It's a gloomy day, but it's still beautiful. Why? Because I got to find a silver lining. Um, I'm blessed to be awake. I'm blessed that I have legs, my hands. You know, I still got my skills, still got my business, still my vehicle. You know what I'm saying? I don't got a 2022 nothing. It's a 2000 Ford excursion, but I didn't rebuild the motor and did all types of stuff and upgraded and lift kit and all that kind of stuff. And this is my baby. It, it takes care of me and I take care of it. And it makes me happy. I, would I love to have a brand new F3? <laughs> Hell yeah. But do I want to deal with the maintenance of that truck, the insurance of that truck, the the gas of that truck, diesel, uh, you know, having a, oh, I got to park over there because it's brand new, man. I don't want to hit my truck, but it comes with a lot of maintenance. And I understand that now. Um, and I don't want, I don't care to impress people. I don't. Uh, this is my baby and, and I'll take care of it. I'll get a you know, new paint job and replace little things here and there, put a little stereo system, whatever. Might upgrade the seats and the interior, whatever. But I've owned this vehicle for a long time and it's mine. I own it, you know, I don't owe nobody no money for it and it drives really well. You know, I have 205,000 miles on it. But like I said, you know, I paid someone to take the motor out, redo all the seals, redo the heads. Uh, it has an exhaust system. It has big battery, big intake, all that kind of jazz stuff. Did all the suspension, brakes, tires, lift kit. You know, all that is taken care of. Transmission is going to get serviced real soon. Um, you know, just with the fluids. Stuff like that, I like to do. And I had a choice. I uh, test drove a brand new Escalade. And I was ready to buy it. But I was like, man, these dudes want 50 something thousand for this vehicle. At the time, it uh, that for that year, it was like a 2016. They didn't have a full warranty on it. So I was like, man, why am I going to pay? And they're like, oh, no, but you could pay and we'll give you. I'm like, why am I going to pay another, you know, three, four thousand, five thousand dollars for extended warranty or aftermarket warranty? And then I'm going to have to pay the taxes on that. And then on top of that, like I'm paying close to, you know, 60 something grand. And that's the price for the newer one, like a newer one, but then you have to pay the taxes on that. So I said, you know what, man, I'm not gonna do this. I'd rather spend 15, 20 Gs fixing the vehicles that I have. So I'm, I've, you know, I'm fixing this one little by little. I got my Denali uh, getting worked on. You know, I got my boy, he's redoing so much on it. I'm gonna get it painted and everything. So I bring that up to say this, man, when you appreciate what you got, you can make it new again. Just like when I talk, I talked to you about my shoes, when I would buy them from Goodwill and get them back. Now I'm doing it the right way because I'm paying professionals to do it. But the fact is, man, that your your train of thought is important. Going through these experiences is important and being in the moment. Don't, you know, we live in a society where we're like, boom, boom, let's, let's go. What's next? What's next? What's next? And you have to appreciate things, man, because you never know what you're going to lose. You never know who you're going to lose. And um, there's a, you have to learn to let go of stuff that you can't control. And things are gonna happen. Like I said, man, things are gonna happen, but you have to learn and grow from it. Uh, I don't entertain uh, violence. I don't entertain arguing. I don't entertain none of that stuff anymore, man. I want nothing to do with that. 
Uh, all I want to do is open my barber college. I want to focus on my life um, and, and buy my house. I'm looking for a house right now. Um, and I'm doing things to make me happy, uh, whether it's playing basketball, whether it's working out, whether it's reading, whether it's staying home, whether it's going out in nature by myself. I don't care, man. I'll, I'll travel the damn country by myself. I don't need to have somebody. Do I want to have somebody? Yes, but it has to be the right somebody. It has to be the right somebody that's going to appreciate who I am, understand what my cause is and, and support each other and that's what it is you know um but i think right now i'm at a, in a point in my life where it's just like i'm gonna do what i have to do and keep pushing because i have a greater purpose in life and uh, if y'all been following my videos man i've been putting these little videos up and you know every now and then I, I know i don't get a lot of views man but the day's gonna come when i do so i keep putting them out because i want to be transparent with people i want to connect with people because i am authentic I'm not here to gas y'all up and tell y'all, man, you can make a million dollars and you're going to be this, you're going to be that. And life is just going to be awesome. And you're never going to, you know, go through trials and tribulations. Like I'm going to be transparent about what I've been through, what I'm going through and where I'm going, because I'm letting God push me where I need to go. And uh, God is doing some amazing things, man. I, I don't want to open my mouth too much about stuff, but God has blessed me tremendously, tremendously, and more blessings are coming. And it's amazing what happens when you surrender your will to God's will. And I'm not saying life is going to be easy, man. I mess up. I'm a man. I'm human. I'm a human that makes mistakes. But I learn from my mistakes now. I hold myself accountable. I look in the mirror and I talk to myself. And I'm like, all right, Joel, this is what you did. You know, you said this, you said that, your demeanor, your you know, your attitude, your whatever I did that offended somebody or where I know that I wasn't being true to the cause, right? That goes against my character and my morals. I need to check those things. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's trying to fight for your time. Everybody's trying to fight for your money. And, I, and you have to be very selective on who you pour into and who you surround yourself with. I'm telling you, man, people don't value something until they lose it. And it sucks that that is the norm for us. But that's also part of the learning process. You, if you want to level up, man, and, I, and I'm speaking to anybody out there that wants to really be successful in life. Being successful doesn't always connect to money. Money's a tool that we use. And I'm glad that we're able to make it and have it and, and all that. But the fact is, what do you do with that money? after you have it, you know, cause making money is the easy part. Keeping it is the hard part, but success is doing something that you love to do and having a purpose. Success is being able to push through situations and making it. Not everybody makes it, man. Not everybody wakes, wakes up and, and disconnects from just the reality that's been created for us. Um, the system, and what I mean by that, I'm saying like the way we wake up, they want us to work nine to five. They want us to work for 60 years or 50 years of our life or whatever it is that they say. And then, oh, after you do that, then you can retire when your legs don't work anymore, when your back's messed up, when your shoulders are no good. Um, that's the system that has been built, you know, and, and we're slaves to that. We're slaves to not only that, we're slaves to entertainment, we're slaves to music, we're slaves to sports, we're slaves to all. Because remember, you only have 24 hours in a day. And if you really want to be real, bro, and you break that stuff down and you see like, wow, I spent six hours on my phone. I spent two hours, you know, watching TV on or Netflix. I did, you know, damn, I spent eight hours at work. I spent seven hours sleeping, whatever it is. I don't know. Those are the bad habits that you have to identify and you have to cut that stuff out. And it's hard because we're addicted. We're addicted to sugar. We're addicted to TV. We're addicted to entertainment. We're addicted to validation from, you know, putting stuff up on social media. So we feel you know, those endorphins and all that stuff in our body. Like, oh, people are supporting. People are loving. People are liking people or whatever. And then we're addicted to pornography. We're addicted to alcohol. We're addicted to drugs. We're addicted to you know, greed. Sometimes people are addicted to power or something, you know, that all these things. And it's different for everybody, man. And one sin's not greater than another, man. Just because you're addicted to 
you know, alcohol and you're like, well, at least I'm not addicted to porn or I'm not addicted to this. Or I'm not, it's like, nah, bro, everybody has a different vice and it's going to ruin us either way. Either way, it's going to ruin us. It's going to ruin our family. It's going to ruin the future generations that come from your seed. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's what you're risking when you entertain all that kind of stuff, man. So that's why I'm telling you, you have to identify your habits and you have to understand why it's important for you to head on those things. Because like I said about Freddie, you never know, man, when you surrender to God, you never know how far God's going to take you. Man, I didn't been around the country. I didn't visited almost every state. I've been to Canada. I've been to Mexico. I've been to Costa Rica. I've been Puerto Rico. I've been like, man, and, and I'm still going to travel. I mean, and I, and I know I'm going to go out to the UK. I'm going to do all these things that I want to do. And I want to travel and go to Italy and go and do all these things. Those are things that I'm going to do, whether I'm going to do it by myself or with a partner or whatever. I don't know. But I know what I'm capable of doing. And I know that God has a calling for me and, and I'm going all the way, no matter what happens, you know, I accept the good and the bad that's going to come into my life. I project good energy at all times. When bad stuff comes, I swerve it. Like, I don't see it as bad, you know, whether I'm driving and people are traffic, people cut me off or people, you know, I'm like, you know what, dude, I'm not even going to acknowledge them to being that they don't know no better. So I'm just going to let them do what they do. Hey, man, you're having a bad day. Cool. If it makes you feel better to cut me off. Cool. You know, because. I can't control that. And if I keep, oh, look at that one. No blinker. Oh, look at that jerk. He's driving fast. Oh, you're in the school zone. Oh, look at they're on the phone. Oh, you're projecting a lot of the things that you do onto these people. And it's okay when you do it, but you're like, oh, look at these jerks. And, you know, I've, I've explained that in other videos too, where I would always be like, God, look, strike them with lightning. Because I wanted to witness God's smiting somebody. You know, but then it's like, oh, God, but when I was messing up, don't do not do that to me. It's like, no, man, you have to understand that God's timing is perfect. And uh, you have to control your emotions, control your thoughts and control what's around you. And it's a level of maturity, man, that I've never been in this space ever in my life. And now I am. But I know why all these things have happened, why I had to go through the trials and tribulations, why I had to you know, go through the pain and go through these valleys because God's like, I got something for you, but you, you got to be ready for it. It's like, if God were to give me a million dollars right now, man, I promise you, I know how to handle it. Now you give 10 year ago, Joe Barber, a million dollars, man, he's going to act a fool. He's going to hurt people. He's going to betray people. He's going to feel like people, you know, like when you get money, people get drawn to you and you don't know what to do and you start like oh he's you know you start questioning people their what, what their you know like uh their loyalty to you and they're like what's their motive like are they just around me because i got money or you know why are these people trying to be cool with me and you start being paranoid and uh a lot of that happens to people because it's hard to go from one end of the spectrum like you're going from being really poor to boom you just got all this money and, and if you're an alcoholic, all it's going to do is empower you to drink yourself to death. You're, if you're a drug addict, it's going to empower you to just kill yourself. Uh, if you're addicted to porn and women and blah, 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 it's going to empower you to do that. Uh, and you'll ruin yourself. Uh, I mean, there's so many bad things that that's why I'm telling you. When you deal with those bad habits and you cut them out of your life, when the blessings come, you know how to handle it. You know how to take care of your home. You know how to take care of the things that God gives you and you take care of them. When he blesses you with something bigger and better, it's the same. It's going to be the same mentality. Like, you know what? I'm going to take care of this thing. And, and God gave it to me. And, and yeah, man, I'm going to park where I need to park and do what I got to do and take care of it. But if something happens to it, it's okay because God, God gave me that, you know, and I'm going to take care of it to the best of my ability and respect it. But it's not going to take over my life and I'm not going to be stressed about, oh, man, I got to take care of it. It'd be, it's just too much. Um, and that's it, man. That's all I have to say. I really feel like I wanted to share that, you know, and be transparent with people because life life is is a it's a beautiful thing, man. The good and the bad life is a beautiful thing, but it's what we make make of it and what we take from it and what we take from it from the lessons. It's not just for you. It's for you to share with people. 
you need to share that with your family and you need to share that with people that you care about because that's the only way we're going to make a change in this world, man. So many people are so greedy. So many people are so like, <laughs> you know, they're zombies, bro. Like, they, and what I mean by that, it's like we're addicted to the flesh. We're addicted to the looking this way and, and feeling like we're better than, you know, I'm not saying it's not, you know, not to work out or whatever, but I'm saying like a lot of our society you know, women feel like they need to have these ginormous boobs and a ginormous butt to be appreciated. And it's like, no, be you. Be what God created you to be, you know, and love yourself for who you are and find out why you're here. And I promise you, you're not going to need all that extra stuff, man. And if you decide that that's what you, then that's your life, you know, and that's your choice. But I'm telling you, I appreciate women that are naturally beauty, beautiful, that, you know, are um, strong-willed, that know what they want out of life, and, you know, that push themselves daily, and yeah, you don't need a man, but um, it's nice to have a good man around every now and then, you know what I'm saying, uh, same thing with, with, with women, man, we don't, we don't need women to be complete as men, you don't have to always be in a relationship, you don't always have to have a partner, um, but it's nice to have one that, that compliments you, you know what I'm saying, but um, either way, I just wanted to say that because uh, I want everyone to prosper. And if my voice can reach, you know, one individual out there and this message help change uh, your trajectory in life, then that's great. You know, I meditate and I study a lot of different people. You know, Bob Proctor was one of the guys that helped me understand about the paradigm of how we make choices in our life and uh how we operate daily and how you have bad habits good habits all that kind of stuff train of thought you know and um you know he also talked about the law of attraction and all that kind of stuff man and i believe all that stuff matters um but i i, I don't want to force anything on anybody you put you put god first and everything else would be unveiled to you you know and i just leveled up myself uh in different areas in my life and i'm just i'm just grateful that I get to wake up and pursue my dream every day. Um, and I have the right people in my life that are helping me. And it's just amazing, you know, and, and I've lost some people. I've lost some friends. I've lost people that I love. Um, and it's okay. Like, I have to accept that. And I don't want to hold bad bl blood against anybody uh, that's not in my life anymore. If people cho chose to walk away. That's their choice. Uh, and it's okay. I have to accept that. And I don't have any tears left to cry about being sad or whatever, because there was actions that were taken and there's repercussions and consequences, regardless of how big or small I think the offense was or how it affected people. But if it hurt somebody that bad, then it hurt somebody that bad or it offended somebody or whatever the case may be. Um, I have to respect that and, and people are gonna make decisions to make sure that they're healthy and make sure that they're doing what makes them happy and keeps them uh, going. So. You know, you never you never want to be the person where you feel like, man, I'm a good guy and people are walking away from you. Um, it does make you feel some type of way. But I don't always see it as people walking away. I see it as God removing people out of my life that no longer serve a purpose. And everything happens for a reason, whether I brought it on to myself or whether consequences brought it to happening into, you know, this and this reality that we're in. But I accept it and I accept the the ups and the downs and uh i don't want to be caught in a cycle of negativity or caught in a cycle of frustration or uh victim mentality man this always happens to me in my life blah, blah, blah. like nah man we ain't doing that we keep it pushing you know chin up chest out you know whatever god got for me whether it's going through the peaks of the valleys or whether it's being on top of a mountain man i gotta always keep god center and 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 that's the mission you know, regardless of how many barber colleges I open, regardless if I win the lottery, regardless if I inherit some money, regardless of whatever God has, I have to make sure that I handle it in the right in the right manner, because it's not for me to enjoy the gifts that God gives me. It's for me to, to fulfill my purpose, but also guide other people so they can fulfill their purpose. And they need to know that, you know what, man, all the hard stuff that you went through. You went through it for a reason because God was getting you ready. And now it's your time to step up and shine. And that's what I'm telling you. All the stuff that you went through, all the, the failures, all the lessons, 
God's preparing you, but you have to hold on to what he has for you. And uh, that's the message today, man. So work on your habits, identify your habits, and make sure that you replace those habits with good habits, with good things that are going to get you closer to being where you want to be in life. Whether it's opening a shop, school, whether it's opening businesses, whether it's whatever it is that you want to do, man, that you feel that God put you on this earth to do, um, do it, man, do it. And uh, I pray that God opens the doors for you. I pray that God guides you. But remember, bad things are going to come, dog. Bad things, you're going to, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, man. You're going to cry. There's going to be days when you want to give up. But no matter what, no matter what, don't give up. Do not give up. Where there's a will, there's a way. Be a person that functions on solutions. There's always a solution. Always. And you just got to trust in God, you know, and do the right thing at all times, man. Don't try to take no shortcuts promise you because all you're going to do is push yourself back i promise you you're always going to push yourself back man you're going to have to sacrifice drinking sacrifice going out sacrifice being with the friends sacrifice relationships sacrifice friendship sacrifice all this stuff man it, it happens but i promise you it's going to be well worth it all right well y'all stay blessed and y'all stay faded